So this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the luck? Come on. Let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code. Woof. It's Windows Pro time. You know what time it is. Woof. Ice, ice, baby. Finally, I get my hands on the 10th generation Intel CPU in this gorgeous XPS 2-in-1. Wow, this thing is amazing. The 16x10 display, it looks sexy, white, thin. Ooh. So this is basically a thermal test. I'll do a little gaming test at the end. My full gaming review of this XPS 13 2-in-1 will, will probably drop tomorrow. But this is just a thermal test to see how this ice lake boogies to see how hard this thing goes. And you would think in such a thin and gorgeous package like this, it's so thin. Remember the last XPS 13 2-in-1? It was like using a Core Y. Now it's got a full 15 watt with decent graphics in it. Stay tuned. I'm going to do content creation review. Really want to see how this does in content creation because it does have improved graphics and improved HEVC encoding and stuff like that. So it should be good for video editing. Whereas any other 13 inch that doesn't have a graphics card, they're not that great, especially in the rendering. They're okay cutting, but rendering, they're not that great. This, I reckon in H.265, it'll go all right. So anyway, stay tuned for that. Now, I actually went down to Sydney last week. Coffee still sucks in Sydney. It was the Intel 10th generation CPU launch. And this XPS 13 2 in 1 was there. There's a few other ones that I want to actually review. I've got another one in here from Azus. <laughs> it looks pretty good too. But that's a Comet Lake. This is a nice lake, which I consider as the real 10th generation because it is the 10 nanometer part. Let's just see the thermals. Because the good graphics only comes on the i7. The i5s, they don't have the good graphics. Like, and this is how many compute units it's got. I'll show a thing on the screen. If I've got the slide ready, I'll show a thing on screen. But, you know, unlike, say, the, for example, the Surface laptop, you get the good graphics on the i5 as well. With the XPS 13 2 and one you need the i7 to get the good graphics. So what is this part? It's 10th generation i7. It is a quad core. Uh, this is the model number here, 1065G. G, you know it's Ice Lake, so that means 10 nanometer. If you ever wanted to know why laptops cost so much, this part alone, 426 US dollars. I mean, they might get it a bit cheaper, but that's why they cost a lot. Um, yeah, so four cores is hyper-threading, eight threads, and we got a base speed of 1.3 and a turbo boost of 3.9, which 3.9 would be single core under a certain temperature and etc. And yes, 15 watts this is, so it's like your normal U part, 15 watts, configurable to 25 watts. This is up to the manufacturer, like for example, the XPS 15, Yes, it's 45 watt part, but I get 56 watts. They allow me to have that much, and depending if the GPU's been lit up, you know, you might or might not get that 56 watts. Now, I will be very surprised if actually this will allow more than 15 watts for a sustained period. So it's configurable to 25. Um, you know, like for example, the Razer Blade, you know, it's 45 watts, it stays at 45 watts, all right? They won't allow you to have any more. Dell are usually good. They'll usually let the horses run free. They usually give you more than what you pay for. And 15 watts in such a thin light package. This is nearly as thin and light as the um, MacBook Air. We're talking about 50, 60 grams or something like that difference. Stuff all, it's actually lighter than a MacBook Pro. Now, the MacBook Air has a wide processor in it because it's so small, right, and light. This is virtually as thin and light you remember the last XPS 13 2 in 1 had the wide processor, so it had the, you know, the low wattage part. This is a full 15 watt, full fat i7 with the good graphics 15 watt quad core, not, you know, dual core like you get on the MacBook Air. So that is good. We'll see how, I, you know, I'm not expecting over 15 watts. It'll probably settle down at 15 watts. And yeah, let's see. 1.3 is its base frequency. Let's see what we can do here. Of course, you get the Iris Plus graphics. Of course, in the i7, you get the good one. Let's go to Cinebench and see what's going to happen. How much wattage we can sustain. Actually says here, package limit 46 watts. What? Is that for real? 46 watts. That must be just a quick boost. See, that's Dell, right? They go hard, Dell. Always go hard. And in a thin and light tool one like this, when you consider that, you know, something usually this size has a wide processor, a low wattage part, 
Let's see what happens. Let's run the Cinebench. And Cinebench is good. The R20 is really good because usually at the end, once all the boost clocks are over, the sustain clock you get at the end of this run is usually what it will sit at, you know, if you have a sustained run of an hour or something like that. So you, did, it did 240 watts. Oh, my God. 40-something watts on that boost. That is amazing. That is that is really good. So we're, you know, 3.5 gigahertz. Uh, temperature's around 74 degrees. Temperature's down here, if you don't know. Uh, the usage is obviously 100%, 99%, 100%. Now we've gone down to 2.7. We've gone down to 30 watts, okay? Um, now it says configurable up to 25, so I'm not expecting anything over 25. In fact, I expect it to settle down at 15 watts. Now its base frequency is 1.5. It's still going at a nice, healthy 2.7. To give you reference from the last like uh, U parts that you got, the 8th generation and 9th generation, most you know ultra books would sit at between 1.8 and 2.3 gigahertz all core burst um you know for a sustained period and the good ones would be about 2.3 you know the ones that weren't so well called about 1.8 so already here 70 degrees it's not that loud can you hear i can hardly hear the fan and we've settled down at 25 watts so there you go they've pegged in they've baked into this 25 watts we're getting 70 degrees, 25 watts, which equals 2.4. And I expect it to stay at this sort of frequency, even on longer runs, because that temperature is very stable. Uh, it's about 20 degrees here in Melbourne, so um, nothing too hot. Or oh, it's about 23 in this room. Uh, and yeah, it's going good. It's going well. And I'm not so worried about the score of the Cinebench. Although, you know, a good score would be 600 for a quad core, something like that. So, you know, maybe 700 would be like epic. That's like the old 45 watt quad cores. And we're sustaining that 25 watts. So that's good. That is amazing that they're not configuring it down to the 15 watts they're giving you. And it's amazing in such a thin and light package. You've got to remember the MacBook Air uses a low wattage part. This is a quad core doing all cores at 73 degrees. It's not very loud. 25 watts. 2.4. That is really good. And that's why I like Dell because they go hard. They, they don't mess about. Um, they'll give you the full. Like it. I'll bet you if you had a Lenovo, that would go down to 15 watts. I mean, they might, you know, their theory is it's going to last longer like that. I don't think so. You know, if this is 70 degrees, I can barely hear it. Can you hear that? So that's quite amazing. Let's have a look, see. It's going to finish. Oh, so here's the final score. My mistake. I was actually thinking of um, Cinebench R15 when I was thinking of, you know, 6700. So 1500, that's a good score for a quad core. Um, you know, it's nearly as fast as the quad cores of you know a few years ago 45 watts so that's really good we're maintaining that 25 watts amazing it's not loud now i wasn't going to leave you hanging there so um, i will do a quick little game test of course i'm going to do my full gaming review now it's saying here find best settings now they said you could play fortnite at 1080 so Let's see what settings this actually gives me. Battle Royale. I haven't played Fortnite for so long. I have no idea what's going on. I'll probably fast forward all this. So it's selected 1080p high settings. All right, we'll see how that goes. I think that's a bit ambitious. 1080p high. All right, all right. So <laughs> what are we doing here? 20 frames per second. I thought that was a bit too ambitious, 1080p high let's change those settings all right so now we're playing medium 1080p full screen let's see what happens El Gato, yes we want to keep these changes medium 1080p oh we don't want to limit the frames we'll just look it's never going to get to 120 so we'll apply that v-sync off okay let's go all right, so now we are playing medium settings, 1080p, bring up those 1% lows. Medium settings looks good. 
1080p full screen we're getting 50 fps man that's pretty good come on integrated graphics you know fortnite is harder than say counter-strike imagine counter-strike i will test counter-strike of course you know they're saying like at 720 you'll be able to get 120 fps and something like that so yeah this is pretty good you can see the frame dips in that you know the one percent lows aren't going to be terrific but still very playable very very playable and this is through a capture card by the way i'm not playing this on the screen i'll have to test if on the screen it's going to be better like more performance but this is into my capture card capturing this so this is good performance for integrated graphics i mean what can you what can you complain about you wouldn't even be able to get a good gaming experience with the old intel hd on this you know, maybe you'll be on 720 low and yeah you'll still struggle to get over like this 50 60 frames per second so 1080p medium full screen yeah you can do it fortnite looks good um more testing to come on this xps 15 it's not that loud listen i'll put the mic right up to it how's that sound yeah it's not that loud and what do we got temperature what temperature of 70 degrees so it's not really that much warmer than just pressing the cpu it's 70 degrees that's nice and cool isn't it so yeah you can game on this thing happy days even medium settings uh should i put it down to low what i'll do is i'll put it down actually i'll put all these down to low except medium no not medium view distance near distance there so now what i'm going to do is put the textures to medium and just put this i'll put this a little bit higher okay there we go basically medium textures and all the other stuff low and we'll see how we go here all right straight away boom shaka laka as ash would say it still looks good because the uh, the textures are at medium and the render oh is he gonna kill me don't kill me um yes he is but we're getting over 60 frames per second look at that 1080p medium textures 70 frames per second even more god that's pretty good because all the other stuff you know who cares about the other stuff oh they're gonna nail me aren't they hello hello what's going on here i haven't played this game for so long but i can't believe we're pushing 60 frames per second we're going into whoa hello some zombies or whatever the hell they are woof 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 okay i didn't last too long there but i was pushing over 60 frames per second medium 1080p it's just a quick gaming test i think i'm gonna believe that it can do 120 at um 720 on uh, counter-strike so yeah you know the frame dips the one percent lows aren't going to be great it's not a gaming laptop but you'll be able to game on these things now you know casual game you know fortnite counter-strike and we'll see how it does with the real harder triple a titles at a guess i'm thinking 720p uh, maybe medium settings something like that we'll see how it goes uh, stay tuned for that i have a full game review on this xps 13 2 and 1 and this is amazing oh, this is really good this thing and i am actually capturing into my computer i'm not actually using the screen on this uh thanks dog for being nice and noisy um so just bear that in mind i will test it all my game testing when it's not captured i always capture footage for you guys so you can see what's going on but when i do the game testing i actually use the screen that you know the laptop comes with so anyway catch you in the next one guys stay tuned more ice lake stuff coming up more xps 13 2 and 1 i will be connecting it to an egpu does having the thunderbolt 3 controller built into the cpu give you less bottleneck with egpus we'll find out catch you in the next one tally ho